Welcome to lesson 1.3 of the OCR Entry Level Certificate in Computer Science video tutorial course. In this video, we examine the concept of operating systems. In this lesson, you will learn to define the terms system software, propriety software, and open source software. You will be able to identify a range of operating systems and categorize them as open source or proprietary software. Finally, you will learn the basic functions of an operating system, including memory management, management of hardware, and management of both the central processing unit and memory. Before we begin, let's recap two key terms. In the previous video, we looked at hardware, which is the name for the physical electronic components of a computer system. In the following lessons for test one, you will be looking at software, which is the name given to the coded instructions that tell the hardware what to do and how to operate. Let's begin by defining the terms system software, proprietary software, and open source software. System software is the name for programs that control the hardware of a computer. There is more to it than this, but for this course, this is all you need to know. Proprietary software is the term given to software that has been created by an organisation and branded as their own. It costs money to purchase, and when you do, you are given a licence to use it. Also, you cannot modify the program's coding. So finally, what is open source software? This is software which has been created by a software developer who has then released the source code to the public so that they can add their own features and functions or they can modify the program for an entirely different purpose. Open source software is often free. Now it's time to look at operating systems. An operating system is the most important piece of software on your computer. Common examples that you may have heard of include Microsoft's Windows, Apple's Mac OS, and Linux for desktop. Also, there's Android and Apple's iOS for mobile devices. So why do we need operating systems? And why are they the most important pieces of software on the computer? First, they provide a graphical user interface, often called a GUI. This allows the computer's user to communicate with it and to get information back in return. Next, the operating system will manage system resources, such as allocating memory to programs and managing the central processing unit. The operating system will provide a platform for other software to run on. Without it, you cannot install applications that allow you to do tasks on your computer. Finally, the operating system interfaces with and manages all the hardware devices in your computer, from the keyboard and mouse to all the components actually inside your computer's tower. You need to be able to categorize the different operating systems as either proprietary or open source software. In the proprietary category, we have Windows, developed and owned by Microsoft. Then we have iOS and macOS, which are developed and owned by Apple. Computer users cannot edit or modify the code on these operating systems. In the open source category, we have the Android operating system and the Linux operating system. We can access the source code for both of these products and change the way they work because the companies that develop these operating systems release their code to the public. Finally, let's examine the basic functions of an operating system. The first is the management of software. The operating system provides a platform that allows other software to be installed and run. Software can be installed and deleted. It can be loaded into memory. And also, the operating system allocates all the hardware resources required to run this software. Next, it manages hardware. It allows device drivers to be installed. And a device driver is just a piece of software that tells the operating system how to communicate with a specific piece of hardware. Once it has this installed, it can communicate and tell that piece of hardware what to do. Finally, it manages the CPU and memory. When a program is loaded, it needs to be loaded from the hard disk drive into RAM, or random access memory. 
the operating system creates space for the program to be loaded and then it makes sure that it's separate from any other program that's already loaded in there. It also controls the CPU's fetch, decode and execute cycle, where instructions are fetched from memory, which is RAM, they're decoded to determine what action to perform, and then they're executed, which means to carry out that task. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to revise all the content and take clear, concise notes. I will see you in the next video.